get the uh, conversation on the market today uh, kicked off with Julia. Um, obviously, the market holding on to those solid gains by the close, uh, promising Chinese data, really lending support uh, as the uh, afternoon session got underway. It ended up being a good session for the Aussie share market with a rise of 0.8%. And as you mentioned, that those numbers coming out of China are certainly helping. We saw that leading indicator for July with a rise of 0.6%. So it is a leading indicator. It's a forward-looking indicator. And it does indicate growth in the Chinese economy for the rest of the year. So that was a positive for the Aussie share market. And the key turnarounds came in the financial space as well as the material space. The financial space had been a key drag on the market earlier during the session but by the end of the session we did see it finishing in the black Commonwealth Bank the only one out of the B4 really ending in negative territory with a loss of 1% but the material space also having a good session by the end of the day up by 0.6% and we saw a bounce back in some of those stocks that had been underperforming so some bargain hunting evident on the market Paladin which has been down 22% in the last month one of the best performers of the day up by six and a half percent so the Australian market really helped along by the Chinese data as well as the Chinese stock market which is up by 2.7% today so it's good to see the Aussie share market with a gain of 0.8%. Volumes around about $5 billion, which is the best for the week so far. Talking about this space, space remaining pretty upbeat about China's appetite for its key commodities. That really despite expectations of waning demand in developed markets. Both BHP Billiton and Rio Tinto have been upbeat about the demand coming out of China. And in fact, if we have a look at the IMF cuts to growth forecasts overnight, they did cut growth forecasts down to 4%, but they're still predicting strong growth to come out of China. And I think they've got it still at 9.5%. So China, India, these are the spaces where the growth is expected to come from. And in terms of commodities, BHP Billiton and Rio Tinto in a good space. Just coming back to Atlas Iron, and it is... Uh, I guess it's undergoing a time of change and it's quite an exciting time for this company. Back in August we saw a maiden profit um, back in June. Its cash balance was at $366 million. We've seen over 40 acquisitions by Atlas Iron uh, to get into the space it is at the moment. And the key advantage that it has over other junior iron ore miners is the infrastructure. Its allocation at Port Hedland and the Northwest infrastructure. And indeed if it does manage this takeover of Theros, which looks pretty Pretty likely it's going to add to its, uh, I guess, its port allocation on the northwest infrastructure by 12 million uh, tons per annum. So another positive there for Atlas Iron. And uh, also in this space, of course, into more detail later in the program with Peter Esho um, on this. But just briefly, the annual results from both David Jones and Kathmandu today really saw top line retailers oversold. If we have a look at these two retailers, really two different tales. If we have a look at David Jones, share price down by 48% in the past year, whereas Kathmandu up by 31% in the past year. If we have a look at David Jones, consumers have really stopped spending there. So no huge surprises in David Jones' result. The first half net profit result, we are expecting to see growth come back 15 to 20%. Kathmandu, we're expecting to see continued strong growth. In fact, these results showed record sales, gross margin increasing by 200 and 30 basis points but the fact is a lot of the good news already priced into Kathmandu and if we have a look at Kathmandu I guess if we have a look at the winter Easter as well as uh, the Christmas period it accounts for about uh, 14 to 16 weeks but this accounts for about 70 percent of its sales so it's very hard to give a forecast in regards to Kathmandu also just quickly coming back to Murchison Meadows it did narrow its loss but one thing for shareholders and investors to really keep an eye on here is uh, the Okaji project Project. Funding for the Okaji mm. project is going to be very much in focus. And that's why even though we did see the loss narrowing, we saw the shares down by 5.6% because a huge question mark in terms of its key expansions in terms of Okaji and Jack Hills because it is running out of cash.